Hi everybody, it's Adam with ArtBowSurgery.com and today we're answering your questions about the use of the mitra clip for the treatment of severe mitral regurgitation. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Mark Gerdish, who's the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. During his fantastic career, Dr. Gerdish has performed over 6,000 cardiac procedures of which more than 4,000 involve some form of heart valve repair or heart valve replacement. Dr. Gerdish, it is great to see you again. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Adam. Always happy to be here. Yeah, so let's get to Brian's question, which is all about the mitra clip, Dr. Gerdish, and he asks, Adam, my mom who is 78 was unexpectedly diagnosed with severe mitral regurgitation. She is active, but definitely slowing down lately. I've been reading about the mitra clip as I'd like her to avoid open heart surgery. Is the mitra clip an appropriate therapy for my mom? It's a great question, Brian. So, uh, and your mom is really kind of a great example of how we have to think this through completely. So she's 78 years old, but it sounds like she's active and fairly fit. So really heart surgery doesn't pose a high risk for her, but still, like you say, you wanna avoid it if you can, right? So would the mitra clip be an option? So I think that uh, there are two things that we have to think about with respect to the mitra clip. Number one, as it turns out, it's really best application where it has made genuine difference is in people with cardiomyopathy. In other words, they have a change in their heart shape that leads to the valve, the mitral valve leaking. And honestly, it's almost been a miracle for some of these older and especially more frail people who are experiencing congestive heart failure because the valve leaks and because their heart doesn't function normally. It's a combination of that. And then putting the clip on there does two things. It lessens the leak and it even may improve ventricular geometry, the heart geometry. So if your mother's leaking valve is due to cardiomyopathy, in other words, a problem with the heart that has led to the valve leaking, heart muscle leading, leading to the valve leaking, not an organic problem with the leaflets of the valve, then I probably am going to steer toward the mitral clip as an option for her. Because in those patients, we can't do as much to lengthen their lives, but we can improve their symptoms and keep them out of the hospital. So if she's having heart failure, that's a good option. The mitral clip in a 78-year-old, otherwise healthy person who has organic disease to the valve. In other words, the valve is, is regurgitant, it's leaking because of one of the leaflets is flailed. That's a little debatable, and I'll tell you the reasons why. One is obviously that we can do the operation minimally invasively and a low risk for surgery. So we can do it through a small incision and the recovery isn't very dramatic and usually people get through it fine. The other is that we don't have a lot of data on degenerative disease with the clip. We have good data, decent data. And what we know is that when the anatomy is very favorable, a discrete portion of the leaflet that is flail, and it's favorable in the sense that the clip can grab it well, then it's actually a pretty good outcome. We know that we can eliminate the mitral regurgitation. It's important though that that regurgitation be gone. So if the clip doesn't do the trick, then you have to add another clip and then you can end up with a blocked valve. So for the folks that, that I've had to take mitra clips out of, I've had to deal with both scenarios where the clip didn't do enough or more than one clip did too much and ended up blocking the valve. So I think, again, it's the team approach. If the interventional cardiologist and the surgeon look at that valve and they say, this is a great mitra clip case. This is gonna take care of that regurgitation and she's gonna go home the next day, perfect. If on the other hand, say, like, well, it's not absolutely sure, we could be left with a mild to moderate leak. In that case, you probably wanna favor having surgery because it's sure that the valve is gonna be repaired. It's essentially certain. It also depends on how much calcification is in the valve too. So sometimes we'll see somebody that has some calcification, it's gonna make the surgery more complicated. We might think ahead of time that we would have to replace that valve if we operated on the patient, we'd have to replace it. It changes our perspective because if we could put the clip on and it works, 
we're out of the woods. If we put the clip on and it fails, well, they can always go on to have their valve replaced. Once the clip is on, about 60% of the time, we're gonna to have to replace that valve. We won't be able to take the clip off and make it work again. So sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. And it can shift us away from a minimally invasive operation to a sternotomy approach. Not always, but it can. We've done them both ways. So I think that these are layers of conversation that are worth having. So the questions are, is the valve leaking because of changes in the structure and function of the left ventricle and not a problem with the valve? In those cases, lean mitra clip. Is it a discrete, easy to fix lesion in somebody who you really are trying to stay away from heart surgery? It's reasonable to, to consider it in that patient. Is it a complex leak that you're not sure is gonna go away with one clip? And the patient is otherwise reasonably healthy at 78 or 80 or 82, or for me, I've, you know, I've done 86 year old people that have failed mitra clip. Those patients need to at least be given the option to have a minimally invasive operation to treat their mitral valve. Admittedly, they're gonna spend a few days in the hospital, but we kind of know what the outcome is gonna be. I know that sounds complicated, Brian, but the reality of it is team, right? Make sure that everybody gets eyes on and everybody meets your mom and everybody makes judgments about your mom's frailty, how robust she is and what her life goals are. How long does she want to live? What is her life going to be like? All of it has to be computed. So Dr. Gerdish, you've laid out the complexity and the nuances of figuring out the best therapeutic approach for Brian's mom. What advice would you have for Brian as he goes through this research process? Research. Brian's doing his research. He's asking the questions and he'll want to involve his mom in it and let her have the conversation as well. And it might mean talking to a couple of different people. You know, if you're not satisfied that you feel you got a full, complete answer, then you move on and get that complete answer. It's not an emergency. So my advice is be sure that you have doctors with whom you're comfortable giving you a complete answer. And if you have questions, even if they're tangential, that you get them answered. Because we're talking about a one-time event. We, won't want, we don't want to do this twice, right? We want it to be a one-time event that puts your mom back on her feet and back in action. Brian, I hope that helped you. I know it helped me learn a whole lot more about the treatment of mitral regurgitation using the mitro clip. And Dr. Gerdish, thanks so much for taking the time to share your insights with Brian and all the members of the heartvalvesurgery.com community. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's a privilege to be part of that community. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.